Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly give you a rundown on how we um, set up our stereo backing tracks at church uh, from start to finish. So what we would typically do on um, during the week or whatever, if we're just setting this up from scratch, what we would have is go under group controls. I should have looked at this before I did this, but all right. So we go to the group controls, and then we assign to uh, we click assign to assign it to like a, a button on your keyboard or um, like a little nano controller that you have but today I'm just gonna do the musical typing just for fun I just now found out that works so that's kinda cool um, so anytime you hit the A key from now on it'll trigger that little button there okay so we'll just do one button for today and you can just think of these as all as different songs and what we have is like the whole keyboard uh, a button for each note on the keyboard there's probably a better way of doing it and if someone has a better idea uh, please let me know because I'm trying to do my best <laughs> so um, so we have like a bunch of racks of these but we'll go with a one here so what we'll do is we'll get our track here we're going to drag this into our um, main stage project and make sure we're on untitled concert or the, the concert uh, level to so drag all this stuff in and get rid of this thing. <clears throat> and then click continue. It's all good. Okay, so that's all our tracks right there. So what we're going to do is go into each one of these um, tracks, go to group, make sure it's on group one, play from start because uh, you don't want, you know, let's say you're practicing in the middle of a Sunday morning and uh, you're playing it and halfway through the song you guys, you know, you guys got the song down and everything so you, you quit, you know, mid song and you stop the track and all that. And then during during the song during service, it plays from the middle of the song. That'd be bad news. So um, you want to make sure that's all, all clicked on to start. Otherwise, you'll have a great train wreck. Okay. And then we go to each one of these and do that. Same thing. <clears throat> make sure it's all in group one. Okay, and then the next thing that we do is go over to the button that we um, want, go to one of the four tracks, and then click the play button. One, two. Now, every time that we click the A key, or whatever key that you have, it'll trigger that button, which sends a signal over to here to trigger the track. One, two. And then you can just hit it again to stop it. So that's pretty much a simple breakdown on what we do and uh, during service for stereo backing tracks. We have all these outputs, output to different XLR outputs um, on our interface. Like uh, we have two tri uh, two microphone outputs, a mic <laughs> XLR outputs for um, the stereo track itself. We have a mono output for a guitar, and if your guitar player's not there, uh, just unmute it. If he's there, mute it. Have a mono output for the click uh, with a guide on it as well. Some people have the guide and the click separate, which is cool. Um, and if your bass player is there, just unmute it or uh, mute it. Okay, and a reason why we would have um, all our tracks on the Untitled Concert is if you have other patches and you uh, have uh, the tracks per patch, it cuts off uh, it cuts off the song if you switch patches, if I remember right. The, the reason why we've done an Untitled Concert, and you guys can test this yourself, but this is what we do. We have all our all our songs, all our patches, all on the entitled concert. So no matter what patch we switch to, no matter which song, those um, tracks will keep going on 
no matter what. That's pretty much a quick rundown of what we do for stereo backing tracks at church. Uh, if you guys have any better ways of doing it, please let me know. Have a good one.